New developments today in the search for a central Kentucky woman who disappeared more than 20 years ago. Why investigators have spent hours outside a home. Common sense would tell you that he's probably armed and dangerous. Police are looking for an inmate they say escaped from a transport van in Clay County. What we've learned so far about his past. President Obama has joined lawmakers from Kentucky and around the country for a national summit to address drug abuse. This is WQIT News at 6. Good evening. Tonight, a nearly 24 year old coal case could be heating up. There are some new developments in the search for a missing Boyle County woman. Anna Lee Manning disappeared in November of 1992. The FBI has now obtained a search warrant in this case, and investigators have spent all day at a home on Spring Valley Road at the Boyle Lincoln County line. Sean Moody is live with the latest in our top story at 6. Sean? Hey, Amber, investigators were here in this front yard for several hours today, digging through it with heavy machinery and with smaller tools. For the past little bit, they've been somewhere else on the property out of sight. We haven't heard much activity. What, they haven't told us what they're looking for, but whatever it is, they've been looking hard all day. The Boyle County Sheriff said this search is connected to the case of Anna Lee Manning. She went missing in Danville 24 years ago. The Sheriff's Office took a fresh look at the case earlier this year, and they haven't said what led them to this property, but they've been working all day long digging with shovels and with heavy equipment. The FBI is here as well to help out. Neighbors said this whole thing was pretty alarming. It started about 7 o'clock this morning. I got a call from my husband and said that there's FBI agents up here. Um, it's a little bit scary. Um, it's not something you see every day, definitely. Now, we don't know much at all about the property investigators are searching, but an article in the Danville Advocate Messenger said that Anna Manning's husband, Anthony, lived in a home on this road back in 1992. Live in Lincoln County, Sean Moody, WKYT. Sean, thank you. Investigators say Anna Manning was last seen in front of a jewelry store on 3rd Street in Danville. Tonight, police are still trying to track down an inmate they say escaped while being taken from one jail to another. Police say the 24 year old Ronald Gray and another inmate jumped out of a transport van in Clay County yesterday. They quickly caught the other inmate, but they have not found Gray. As Phil Pendleton tells us, police say Gray has a violent past. Police swarmed the area near Kentucky 11 and 421 Monday afternoon, creating a lot of concern in the town of Manchester. They just told me that he was considered dangerous. Police were talking about 24 year old Ronald Gray, who, along with 34 year old Ledford Hamilton, escaped a van taking them from Knox County to the Leslie County Jail. Gray was recently indicted on robbery, assault, and various drug charges from a violent home invasion in January where the homeowner was pistol whipped. Yeah, I kept a watch on this place. Um, I kind of stayed up pretty late last night watching over it. The escape remains under investigation, but Clay County Sheriff Kevin Johnson says the two were able to reach out through an open van window and unlock the van from the outside. Ledford was captured fairly quickly. Obviously, they're not familiar with the area, uh, so he wasn't. He didn't run that far. He just basically ran a couple hundred yards and was was hiding behind uh, some buildings and things of that nature. Gray eluded police, and based on his criminal past, Johnson says local residents should remain vigilant. Common sense would tell you that he's probably armed and dangerous. The Leslie County Jailer says both deputies in the transport were fired. Because he says the veteran guards did not meet his standards and expectations, despite both being experienced and qualified. In Clay County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Police say Gray was last seen wearing gray sweatpants, a white t shirt, and flip flops. They say they do not know if he has a gun. And new tonight, a fugitive wanted on multiple charges has been found in Lexington. Police say they arrested 38 year old David Suarez last Thursday during a traffic stop on Manowar Boulevard. They say that he went by the nickname Drummer Dave. Police say that Suarez had warrants out of Garrett County for attempted murder of a police officer, fleeing or evading, burglary, drug trafficking, and wanton endangerment. He also had a Jessman County warrant for parole violation. And Lexington police say they found drugs at his home during a search last December. 
It has now been one week since terrorists attacked the airport and subway system in Brussels, Belgium. Among those killed, Lexington native Stephanie Schultz and her husband Justin. Now their families are getting ready to start planning funeral services. Monique Blair has the latest information. For Carolyn Moore, much of the past week was spent searching for her daughter and son-in-law in Brussels. But now Moore is back home in Lexington, grieving their loss. One week ago today, Carolyn Moore was getting ready to get on a plane at the Brussels airport after visiting her daughter Stephanie Schultz and his son-in-law Justin Schultz. But then the airport was attacked. Soon after that attack, Moore realized her daughter and son-in-law were missing. Four days later, on Saturday, the family's worst nightmares came true when they were told Justin and Stephanie were among the more than 30 people who were killed in the attacks. Yesterday, a Tennessee state legislature held a moment of silence for Stephanie and Justin Schultz because Justin was from Gatlinburg. Stephanie's aunt says her remains will not be back in Kentucky until likely next week because of the additional forensics that are being done because this was an act of terrorism. Stephanie's family will not be having a funeral for her until her body is back in the States and she can properly be laid to rest. In the newsroom, Monique Blair, WKYT. And funeral arrangements for Justin Schultz have also not been released yet. A group from Madison Middle School is heading home a day after they were at the U.S. Capitol building when police shot an armed man. None of the 43 students and seven chaperones from the school were injured. The group was taken to a secure room in the Capitol after police shot the man. Parents say the group will return to the school about midnight. Parents also say they'll receive a police escort from Exit 90 in Richmond to the school. New tonight, Berea police have a warning about a phone scam. They say a woman in Berea received a call today from a person claiming to be a police officer. The caller claimed the woman's son had been arrested and her grandson was at the police station. The caller said she would need to get $4,000 in iTunes cards to get her son out of jail. The caller also put a child on the phone claiming to be the woman's grandson. Berea police say the woman didn't fall for it. They say police will never call you and ask for any kind of payment over the phone. New tonight, a Madison County man facing charges after police say he lied about being kidnapped. Richmond police say 20-year-old Austin Kaler called his family and claimed he was being held prisoner at a home. They say he told his family they needed to pay a $150 ransom to keep him from being killed. Police investigated, but said Kaler made up the story to get money from his family to buy drugs. He's charged with falsely reporting an incident, disorderly conduct, and theft. After a couple of cooler days, it looks like some warmer air will be moving in for our Wednesday. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look now at your forecast. Yeah, it's going to feel like spring over the next few days. It looks the part out there now, and then you step outside, you do notice that little bit of a chill that is in the air. Beautiful skies dominating the weather picture from start to finish today. Those temperatures mainly into the mid and upper 50s this afternoon. That's actually not that far from normal. Normal highs right now creeping toward the low 60s, and we're going to up that as we go forward. Corbin, Jackson, Frankfurt, Lexington, everybody with that deep blue sky across central and eastern Kentucky. Defender Radar Network, hello and goodbye, all in the same sentence. Nothing locally. Let's bounce it out and see what we can find. Coming in from the west, high clouds, Mississippi Valley. Now that's a sign of some change. Changes that will show up later in the week, not so much in the short term. If you're out this evening, let's concentrate on a forecast that is gorgeous. Uh, picture perfect sunset out there. 54 degrees pre sunset, upper 40s as soon as the sun drops, the temperature will drop as well by 11 o'clock, low 40s showing up into most areas. Here's what I'm tracking uh, as we roll forward. Strong cold front showing up on the weather scene for Thursday with showers and thunderstorms. That'll take us into early April and a pattern that has a couple of cold shots in it. It's one that has been forecast for a little while now. We will show you how low we go and how bumpy it gets as we make that transition, guys, from 70s to the possibility of below freezing temperatures. That's in a few minutes. It is a major problem in Kentucky and across the country. So what can be done to stop prescription drug and heroin abuse? Thousands of people, including the president himself, have gathered for a national summit in Atlanta to address that problem. Our investigative reporter Miranda Combs is in Atlanta tonight with the story new at 6. This is the fifth year for this summit, but it's the first year the word heroin is being used in its name. It's the 
National Drug Abuse and Heroin Summit. It's the largest of its kind, and this year, this one being held in Atlanta, is their biggest one yet. So big, in fact, that the President of the United States stopped in this afternoon. President Obama made it clear that addressing the nation's drug epidemic is a priority for his administration. He's got a $1.1 billion budget proposal to help those wanting treatment to get the help that they need. He spoke at a panel session for more than an hour this afternoon in front of Kentucky lawmakers, policymakers, and researchers. We've got a all hands on deck approach increasingly that says we've got to stop those who are trafficking and, and preying on people. But we also have to make sure that our medical community, that our scientific community, that individuals, uh, all of us are working together in order to address this problem. Our investigations team has made the drug epidemic in Kentucky our priority as well. From traveling to Detroit to see the start of the heroin pipeline to covering multiple angles of the controversial treatment drug Suboxone and also talking with those struggling with addiction and families who have lost loved ones to addiction. We've also interviewed mothers of babies born already dependent on drugs. All those topics are being discussed this week at the summit, and we will be bringing you more as it continues throughout the week. U.S. Congressman Hal Rogers will be speaking in a congressional leaders forum tomorrow. We'll be talking to him tomorrow about his holistic approach to solving the drug epidemic in Kentucky. For now, we're reporting from Atlanta. Miranda Combs, WKYT. And 2,000 people from 49 states have registered to attend that summit. Eating at a Scott County restaurant tonight will help the family of a woman battling two rare cancers. Doctors have told 26 year old Lauren Johnson that she only has three to six months to live. She worked at Giovanni's in Georgetown when it first opened eight years ago. So today, the restaurant owner, they're donating 100% of their sales, including tips to Lauren and her family. I'm praying for a miracle. That's what I'm praying for. But if that doesn't happen, this is the least, the least that we can do for her. Lauren has a 20-month-old daughter. If you'd like to donate to the family, we have a link at WKYT.com. We have some new information tonight about the search for a missing Laurel County teenager. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office says 16-year-old Haley Lambert was found safe just before 5 this afternoon. Deputies did not say where she was found. They say she disappeared last Wednesday after a disagreement with a family member. New tonight, a Lexington Brewery is making plans to expand. West 6th Brewery plans to open a tap room near the corner of Main and Limestone next to Sunrise Bakery. It will be called West 6th Green Room. Owners say it will allow them to brew Specialty beers on a smaller scale. Oh, it's a, it's a huge deal for us at West Sixth. I mean, we weren't actively looking for uh, a new opportunity to expand downtown, but uh, it really does provide us with a chance to do some different sorts of things than we'd be able to do out here and uh, to reach a whole different group of people. West Sixth Green Room is expected to open in the middle of May.